dollar, dollar, dollar. Dirt and money, no soul. Had to go and get it, ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack of flip for my foes. Dollar, 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't declare me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar, 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 dollar. Let me watch out for my partners. Keep my money long, get my team strong. Let me run away from my problems. Yup, what's good, original crew, man? We back. We got the most homicidal animal on earth. It's not what you think. Hmm? This title in itself can be... It's not what you think. I mean, I don't think too much. I think shit. Any, any, anything that's walking on this earth is uh, capable of anything. Not, not even walking on this earth. Just being on this earth. You got shit that's... that's swimming. Swimming too. Problem. Yeah. Well, they just walking. She ain't flying. She's flying. Hell, she, she got things in a, a little, some little small like little mosquito will kill a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? They carry shit. So, you gotta be careful out here on this earth, man. Yo, be ready for any and everything. <laughs> what that piss? <laughs> Make sure y'all check out the links in the description box, man. Down below. You already know where to go if you want to first part. You gotta do it, check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, like it do it Thumbs up. We're highly appreciative, man. But with that being said, you ready? I'm ready. Let's see what cash we got for us today, man. Let's go. So in 2016, the University of Granada published a study that tried to answer the question of what mammal out of the thousands on Earth is the most homicidal. And the results, well, if it wasn't on paper, you wouldn't believe it. Researchers created a list of over 1,000 candidates and by painstakingly studying over 4 million animal deaths total and recording how many of those life retirements were caused by the same species, they were able to mathematically determine what mammals were the most likely to murder their own kind. And nobody could have predicted some of the answers. The Dama Gazelle placed 16th on the homicide scale Damn. with an 11.85% chance of getting past tense by another Dama. Slightly above them at 14th were chinchillas with a probability of getting put down by a fellow chilla at a what we what what are humans rank? We gotta be number one. You know what I'm saying? We gotta be number one. I don't think no other species on Earth kills its own more than humans. More yeah, majority like, of um, man fatalities come from another man. Mm -hmm. Well, I might be the statistics might be wrong, but I'm just saying you, you get where I'm going it. with it. Hopefully, somebody do. You know, it's be 12%. Wonder. Brown bears just barely made the top 30 at less than 10%. But the bears of the sea, specifically the New Zealand sea lion, lapped them with an execution rate above 15. Now, you're probably wondering where humans ranked on this list. We gotta be up there. I mean, there, there's just no way. No. Humans didn't even crack the top 40 with less than 2% of human soul evictions caused by another human. In fact, that's a, that gotta be a motherfucking lie. I mean, hey, according to all the these homicides. Murders? Hell no. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't calculating the shit right, bro. <laughs> Out of all the humans, well, I guess because it's a more larger portion of humans on Earth, so the, no, yeah, so the ratio gonna be low. But let's 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 focus on the U.S. <laughs> I feel you. Hey, not not to be you know what I'm saying, but God damn, like. What? Well, I didn't even go. I'm finna no. say, well, the country, but I'm, I'm not. Yeah, there's I'm some not. countries outside of the U.S. Uh, yeah, you got, I was gonna say, people we ain't gonna focus just who, on who, who who mark a lot of their own people. We ain't gonna go on now that. Yeah, let's just get back to the program. <laughs> let's get back to the animals. Mm -hmm. According to the numbers, lemurs have far more bloodlust than humans and chimpanzees. But the most horny for homicide mammal in this study, the most murderous creature on Earth, was the meerkat. No, mm -hmm. not a meerkat. The meerkat, with about 20% of those in God's recently deleted having been airdropped by another meerkat. But like with any true psychopath, to see where these tendencies come from, we gotta look at their family. Meerkats are a type of mongoose, an animal that essentially married crack and determination with gang mentality. We're gonna get back to them in a second, but just know, running a fade with mongoose is like getting attacked by a team of temperamental tube socks with teeth. But if you take a wider look, meerkats belong to a super family that I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. I just know that they share it with fusas, which I talked about last video, and hyenas. Yeah, the hyenas' closest relatives are mongooses like the meerkat, and that made no sense to me until I heard what meerkats sound like. Why the motherfuckers 
<laughs> the mongoose is probably most famous for their eternal beef with snakes. Except the word beef is doing a lot of heavy lifting, since snake versus mongoose oh! are more lopsided and an edge up from Stevie Wonder. A common misconception is that they're immune to snake venom. They're resistant, but there's a point where enough venom will murk even a mongoose. The mongoose has a mutation in their nicotonic acetylcholine receptor that makes it harder for neurotoxic snake venom to bind to it. That's how the same cobra that can flatline a person in 15 minutes can fully get put on a t-shirt by a warpath weasel. And meerkats will run fades with highly venomous snakes and turn them into a belt if they need to. These sand assault squirrels will even weaponize the power of friendship to flex on enemies like snakes through a process called mobbing. Speaking of which, don't worry, I didn't forget about this. But to explain why meerkats have such a high KD ratio against their own kind. We got meerkats, the red tailed monkey, blue monkey. And never heard of no blue monkey. Red fronted lemur. The mongoose lemur. The black. Damn, New Zealand sea lion. Damn. Oh, that's a, and then the bottom. Yeah, I'm looking at the bottom now. The mm. brown bear, uh, the African wild dog. Okay, yellow mongoose. I'm just skipping over some now. Uh, you can pause, stop, and read it. Hopefully, you can see. Pop it on TV if you can. <laughs> uh, humans ain't even on this at all. I'm what still. What? I'm still like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. You gotta understand how functionally dysfunctional their families are. The Meerkat Empire is built on a foundation of violence, extortion, spawn killing, cannibalism, but most importantly, a power hungry mother, and it goes like this. Meerkats live in groups called mobs, and each mob is a conglomerate of several family units merged together as one. And sitting at the throne of each mob are the dominant couple, the alpha male, but more importantly, the alpha female. Because like with their bigger hyena cousins, meerkats are female dominated, and it's the biggest, meanest mama meerkat that calls the shots. Everyone has a job in meerkat society, and the alpha female is responsible for birthing new members to the mob, which is why she eats by far more than anyone else, so that she can make enough milk to feed her pups. The top male is primarily in charge of guarding his defenseless kids and when he's not doing that, he's usually out hunting or spreading his scent to reinforce his territory. Then you have the scout team, the meerkats whose jobs are to forage for food wherever they can find it. And watching their backs are the sentinels, the security guards of the clan who keep an eye out for ops like eagles or jackals and will alert the foragers of danger with an alarm call. And back with the newborns are the babysitters who keep the new recruits from wandering and going MIA and the second they hear that alarm, they either rush the kids back underground or prepare to defend them with their life. And of course, to teach the meerkats how to meerkat, you have meerkat mentors. That job description includes passing down all the tricks of the trade, like how a scorpion minus a stinger is just free protein. They'll even hand a mutilated scorpion to the pups for them to hone their hunting prowess on. By the way, did you know that when you remove a scorpion's stinger, you also remove its anus? So if they don't get discharged from reality right there, they get put in a coffin by severe constipation months later, the more you know. And last are the pups themselves, and their only job is- It is the more you know. I didn't know that. Damn, that's crazy die. And you're gonna see why just surviving meerkat society can be harder than Hefner. One of the most crucial rules of meerkat monarchy is that only the alpha female is allowed to have pups, and she can end up spawning 80% of all the infants in the mob. If one of her subordinates literally f***s around and she's the one to find out, the penalties can include the illicit offspring getting discontinued permanently, and even the offending female getting banished from the family by the queen. And with how meerkat mobs work, a lot of times this involves a mother evicting her own daughter. And with meerkats being used social, getting kicked out can be a death sentence with extra steps. So often the outcast will come crawling back and sometimes she's allowed back in, but on one condition. The alpha female can and will force the insubordinate outlaw to breastfeed her children, basically using the threat of eviction to turn what's often her own daughter into a wet nurse. The price of promiscuity is why most baby meerkats born will celebrate their first birthday in the afterlife. Pups not birthed by the alpha are at such a risk that some insubordinate females will even catch a case eliminating the queen's kids if it means giving her own a better chance. But it's not that easy. The meerkat monarch. That is so fucked up, bruh. Damn, so if I'm just born, I ain't have shit to do with shit. They ain't got shit to do with me. My mom was the one that's horny. And they said, ah, oh, you born, we gotta kill you. You know uh, how fucked up that is? Very much so. Like, wow. Eliminating the queen's kids if it means giving her own a better chance. But it's not that easy. The meerkat monarch is so attached to the throne that she's even willing to exile one of her daughters just for getting too big and therefore being too big of a threat. 
Just like hyenas, female meerkats produce double the testosterone as males, and they use this to bully the rest of the mob into submission. A banished female does have the options of either trying to bag a bachelor to start a mob of her own, or just straight up trying to join a new one. But there's always the chance she gets violently rejected for her efforts. To put it in perspective, imagine a grandmother that not only puts her daughters out on the street for getting pregnant, not only turns her own grandchildren into a case number, but only lets that daughter live under her roof if she agrees to nurse her mother's kids, which, yes, would mean breastfeeding their own younger siblings. It's twisted, but that's just how meerkats manner. And speaking of siblings, even your own roommate in the womb weight room can do you dirty. Meerkat pups will often square up and throw paws with each other, and even though these fights aren't to the death like with hyena cubs, there's a direct relationship between the availability of food and just how violent these fades can get. Early on, meerkat pups rely 100% on helpers bringing them food, and a pup will start something with their own sibling if they see that one getting too close to a helper. The human equivalent would be your mom coming home with McDonald's and you and your brother throwing fisticuffs with the winner getting to eat and the loser getting to watch. Actually, we might not be that different. And if that weren't enough, there's always the possibility of a rogue Yoink. male kidnapping an unsupervised pup to try to add it to his own mob. To be fair, kidnapping's rare, but it usually ends with one less meerkat to count. Now, everything I just mentioned involves politics within the mob. Intermob conflicts happen too, and it's usually when a foraging party of sand seasoned assassins trespasses into rival territory. And like with every other aspect of this murder mongoose's life, this too can lead to violence. The meerkat mafia will try to intimidate the opposition with a war dance. Now usually, that's all this is, just a bunch of aggressive posturing and a healthy helping of hold me back. But 10% of the time, words can't do what war can, and it gets physical enough to remove multiple meerkats from the census. And according to studies done in the Kalahari, almost half of mob on mob brutality is initiated by the alpha male. So long story short, males are usually the ones starting stuff with other mobs, while females prefer to keep their beef inside the family. All that adds up to one in every five meerkat obituaries being authored by another meerkat. Meanwhile, the much more infamous hyena has a homicidal hit rate of about 8%. It's at a point where you almost wonder why meerkats don't just choose to live on their own, since the biggest threat to their way of life is often another meerkat. The answer- Well, I said it is, they want to live on their own because then you have the threat of, because they so little, can they possibly survive if they was just solo dolo or, or a smaller pack? You get what I'm oh, saying? I, yeah. Because they're so little and small, like, they have to travel in the mall. Once I get to, be... to a certain little age, I done learned a little bit, I'm going to run away. But you're still little compared to the rest of the world. I mean, it's cool. And you can't you can't survive and just by yourself. They need to I be mean, able yeah, to attack true, as a But damn, a I could not wake up to my, well, wake up to mine and y'all take me out. That too. What you mad at me for? What I do to you? You breathing? <laughs> and you take it. And you eating one less than you makes more food for me. I done got bigger than you. Now you jealous? Hating on me? Hey, one less you more food for me. That's crazy. That's how they look. Look at it. Cats don't just choose to live on their own. Since the biggest threat to their way of life is often another meerkat. The answer is you sociality. Sparknote's version, it's a system where there's one female spawning babies and everybody else works together to bring up the children while also splitting the labor of the colony. Bees and ants are probably the most famous eusocial insects, and so far, we can only name two eusocial mammals, those being the raisin of rodents to naked mole rat and mongooses like, yeah. Meerkats live in the desolate, sun-baked deserts of the Kalahari, where grocery shopping is a treasure hunt and death can get delivered to you faster than an Amazon package. The mob system, although not perfect, keeps members fed and protected, especially the pups who almost always have someone watching over them. Their alarm system is so advanced that the sentinels have different calls for different situations with different levels of urgency. For example, the warning call for an approaching fox or jackal is not the same for that of a bird of prey. And like I said, the power of friendship is their best weapon against threats like snakes. In fact, the only snakes they really have to worry about are the ones related to them. So when it comes to meerkat family, you can't live with them, but you don't got a chance in hell without them. I've called a lot of animals homicidal, but no mammal is more murderous and more of a legitimate danger to themselves than a baby-faced foot-tall terminator and the comic relief of Lion King. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Oh, shit. Small You said what? You don't get it. Tomorrow and put Oh. Akuna. Matata. Akuna Matata. What a wonderful. No, please be. Please. <laughs>
Kuna but you know, I just take my chances and just stay with my mob and, and just pray that they but don't take me out. The better off day. just staying with your mob though. Because I'm better with I'm better with them. Stronger with them. Stronger with them than you is without them. Yep. Without them, who are you? Just what you need me to do. I do what you just don't take me out, <laughs> okay? You just gonna bitch up, huh? I don't do I, I just you gonna bitch keep up my life. No, you gonna bitch up. Follow the line. Just, just, let me just do my duty. So how how does the throne? So I guess the 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 queen has to die for the throne. Be, so who overtakes the throne? Then we all been bitches. I guess the daughter, right? She been be bitched out. So she you weak? Not necessarily. You are. You can't even stand up to your old ass mama. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna, come on, that's let your be mama. real. Your mama willing to kill you. You gotta be willing to I kill. Mean, she get, I mean, but she did know. Nah, nah, your mama. I mean, I, that's all. And I she kicked you out, willing for you to go out and die. She don't get too fussed about you because you another woman. But then now she gone. So now she you, said, "I'm now the head you pussy can... in charge." Yeah, yeah I, I got it. When you but say no. that. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I don't know. But I would think the daughter, right? I would think. <laughs> hey, man, with that being said, y'all continue to spend my up in the comments, man. Y'all let us know y'all thoughts Please about do. it in the comment section down below. But as always, I do go with the name DJ The Kid. This is